Hello? Justin just called me. Uh, the internet over there in the studio messed up, or it's having some issues, so I started it. So... Yeah. All right. everybody good morning and welcome back to reaper pro tips sorry for the delayed start it seems that the studio decided it did not want internet this morning and uh justin uh after warring with it called upon his second in command uh john to uh start the stream from the other direction so hi we're here thank you all for waiting um oh hold on i'm resizing my window so that i can see you chat i want to see all of you there we go bigger bigger chat window must have. Ah, okay, not that big. Now you're everywhere. <laughs> chat is everywhere. It's like the birds or something. When chat descends in a giant flock and you're scared. Yeah, um, no, 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 no. I'm glad that, I assume that's a jubilant coffee, Crowley, rather than an imperative you must have coffee, coffee. A rascal, thank you for making it. Uh, Justin is not on. John is, John is kind of riding herd today, I think, because John is the one who popped into Discord. The Birds was your first horror movie. Oh, no. Mine was The Blob. And I still, to this day, cannot stand sticky, amorphous things. Howdy from North Dakota. Yeah, howdy from Northern California. Back at you. Ah. Bit of both, really. <laughs> John is John is hurting us in that, in that particular. He's hearing us, at any rate. Or he was. Um, but yeah, apparently the studio is... Internet is... Uh, has been compromised, so uh, we're here. We're here by ourselves. How you doing? Okay. Uh, yay, good. Yeah, Reaper Virtual Expo boxes. Good job. I'm going to set up some minimum gold. I think that's really what we're working on today. Just finishing her out. She's almost done. Here, let's get to the, the mini screen. Mini screen. Boop. Here she is. Let's get her in focus. I'll probably be working up here. There we go. Nice and nice and clear. Sweet. And yeah, I definitely want to work on that NMM a bit. Oh yeah, okay. I get you, hamster. Good. Yeah, well, it did warm up. I mean, on Sunday it was like 70 degrees in Texas. So if they shipped it out Monday Monday and you got it next day, you're more than good. <coughs> As a child, you thought the blob could be defeated with peanut butter. Well, peanuts are toxic to a great many life forms, so you could be right. Ah, oh, dear. All right, let's mix up some things. We're mixing up some things. All right. NMM colors. Yo, planer. How goes your day so far? As I mix uh, lantern yellow into all of my happy little colors to make them more yellowy, more goldish, as it were. Uh, what do I need? White. And I need a drop of rich leather. Maybe you should do polished leather. Oh, you're about to eat. Evening. It was a good evening. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, I'm just randomly mixing up things in little splotchy blobs. Splotchy blobs. Here's all my splotchy bobs before I mix them up. Let me get my mixing brush and get my water dropper. And we have splotchy blob number one, which is four rich leather and one lantern yellow. Splotchy blob number two, which is four NMM gold highlight, one rich leather and one lantern yellow. Let's see what I'm doing here. Um, and this one, which is four NMM gold highlight, one white, one lantern yellow. And then we'll go up to pure white from there. Probably we might actually... Uh, Hmm. Hey there, Chibi. New to the hobby. I see. Yeah, Core Aura, the other one, if you want to start on a slightly lower budget, Rascal, is the starter set, which gives you, it's 11 colors, so it's a lot more affordable. Um, and I chose them because they're pretty good foundational core. You know, you get, you get a good blue, you get a good green, you get a good red, you get a good yellow. 
Um, in a lot of ways, it's some of, I think, the best, most useful colors in our lines. There's kind of a mix of uh, bones and regular colors in there, too, so you get to try both lines, although they're very similar. Bones just tends to have slightly higher coverage. Paint mixing. You like it when I show my paint, my paint splotches when they're, when they're polka dotted? <laughs> Estro. <laughs> Having dinner. Six hours painting. Yes, many stretches, Kerniko. We cannot go without stretches. Cauliflower rice with turmeric and chili chicken. Ah, oh, that sounds so fantastic. That's like my kind of meal. Once I learned that like you need to cook cauliflower rice adequately and then it stops tasting like cauliflower, it, things got much better. And I'm going to put two drops of water in each of these to see how they run and then I'll adjust. I also need probably a shadow color, and for that, I think I want, I think I want russet brown for this one because I want something that's more neutral. Yes, welcome to miniature painting. I'm doing okay today. Today was day two of Anne getting up early to do uh, exercises and yoga routine to strengthen my core so that my back stops being such a complaining beast. Um... So we'll see. We'll see. I will say that I did notice yesterday after getting up a little, and no, I'm not getting up super early or I'm just getting up like maybe 20 minutes earlier, but I did notice yesterday that my energy was improved by a lot. Um, like going through the first part of the day, especially I had a lot more energy. So I guess even if it helps my back a little, if it gives me more energy for my day, that's actually a plus. Um, so right away, at least I'm seeing some result, even if it's not necessarily you know, my back strength isn't going to change overnight. My core isn't going to. But it is kind of nice. Because I, mean, I had some downtime while David's in the shower anyway before I hop into it. And uh, usually I just make tea and scroll around on my phone. But repurposing the time for uh, stretching is actually pretty pretty nice. Oh, you have a gift sub, rascal. Thanks, Quindy. Oh, good. You're almost normal in Austin. Yeah, um, I know that I have another, there's another streamer, stream person here who's uh, in Austin or nearer to it that uh, got their water back a couple days ago. So yeah, it seems like Texas is um, coming out of the apocalypse now. Sadly, it was before you guys could actually strap weapons to vehicles and, you know, start shooting paintball pellets at each other, which would really hurt right now, or back then anyway, because you were frozen. So it'd be frozen paintball pellets, which actually might do damage. I don't know if Mythbusters ever tested that. Water and some fruit. Ah! I pretty much fast until I have my, until after I have my shower. I've been, I don't do intermittent fasting. I have a friend who's really all about it. I find it hard enough to go 12 hours without foods, but I do try to do that 12 hours if I can. Oh, you tried it, Scrying Eye? It hurts bad? Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I'm thinking about going back on keto a bit, actually. I've been having some blurbles lately. And uh, keto does seem to help a lot of my gut issues. So thinking about uh, giving it another roll. Keto being ketogenic diet for those who do not know what keto is. The, the reason Anne is a much thinner Anne today than she used to be is that diet. Alrighty, now we got all of our colors. Let's show all of our colors. Oh wait, we're gonna have to zoom out a little bit to show all of our colors. Zoop. There we are, perfect. Keto and elimination. Yeah, well, I mean, I have to eliminate tomatoes. I eliminate gluten. Yeah, so I'm with you, planner. I think our diets are probably pretty, uh, pretty close, actually. Although I had added in more um, carbs as long as they were more complex carbs, like um, uh, green plantain and... Um, Every once in a while, some popcorn, just a little bit, you know, stuff like that. Had had allowed myself to have a little bit higher carbs in there. And uh, I don't think, it, I don't know, that might be the reason my guts are acting up a little bit. It's hard to say because sometimes the changes you make are cumulative, right? They take a while to really ramp up in you. And then you're like, oh my gosh. And you're like, where did this come from? Yeah. Yeah. We still don't know what I have. Um, I have a new doctor now, though, so... 
I'm going to ask her to recommend a gastrointestinal doctor for me. All right, let's do some, uh, let's do some lightning because I got it very dark on the gold here, which doesn't make sense for gold. It makes more sense for bronze. So if these are bronze or brass, mostly bronze, then this sort of uh, darkening of the details makes a lot of sense. But if it's gold, everything here should be a lot shinier. So I have to really choose now. Popcorn with a little salt and pepper, yeah. I love plantains. I, I, uh, I love plantain chips, and uh, the green plantain chips are not too bad. As long as they're fried in appropriate oil. But uh, Terra Chips has their green plantain chips, and they fry them in coconut oil, so they're perfect. Hey, friendly, friendly pyro. Good. I hope you didn't get them when it was freezing, because freezing and paint do not go together. But other than that, yeah, welcome to the hobby. We've got a couple new people here today. Rascal and Pyro. Welcome, welcome. I'm Anne. I made that paint. Um, not, not physically anymore, because I moved out west, but uh, for the last uh, 15 years before this, I made the Master Series paint. I created all of it. I made all the formulas. I made up all the colors. Almost all the colors. Ron made up a couple colors. When I was too uh, too exhausted from making up 500 colors, he decided he would make up some for me and help me out. Um, but yeah, so if you have questions about Master Series Paint, I am your girl. And I am on this Reaper channel every morning during the week. All right, so I'm lightening my underside here a little bit so I can get some of this dark out of here. I still need a bit of contrast because, uh, you know, we've got... Uh, we do have NMM here, and so since we're doing kind of a non-metallic metal, we do need to keep some dark in here. But what I'm doing is kind of adding in bits to break it up so that the overall shift on these little gold things is lighter. While I still can keep the details, I still want to see all those little details. Anne made all the good colors. Now, now, Sadie made good colors, too. She made um, squid ink and uh, shark bite. Those are, like... Fast becoming and doxy blush. I used doxy blush recently. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you ordered the corset today, it should rascal. But because the postal service has been so screwed up with all the the pandemic and everything, and they've been screwed up for a while, I'm not certain. Uh, couldn't vouch for it. Um, and it depends on if it was sent out. Uh, I don't know if we're shipping only UPS or USPS. That's that's like not a question for me, sadly. In the old days, when shipping was, you know, on time all the time, I would have said, oh, absolutely, because Reaper usually will ship out an order the day after they get it. But uh, you'll get a shipping um, notification. We're real good about that. All right. So, yeah, it's a little bit better. Let's get these little guys up here. Oh, I'm going to need a liner color. I forgot because I actually do need to line these bracelets. You can see there's a little break there. Your Reaper com box finally moved. Yeah, welcome to the first level of the addiction. Yeah, good huntsman. Yes, all still sorting out all the frozenness. Exactly, because Texas was hit pretty hard. And Reaper is in Texas, if you did not know. High fiber. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's hard. Uh, Twisted Oma, if you look in a psyllium husk, uh, maybe. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think what you could mix it into because it really does need to get mixed into stuff. I use it in my baking when I bake my um, my gluten-free, low-carb stuff. Um, so you could do that. Or I used to also mix it into my cauliflower rice oatmeal. So, uh, But it's it's really it turns into a gel in water, so it's really gross <laughs> if you try to just drink it like some people say you should. But I always mixed it into things like mashed potatoes or, or you know, before I was um, low-carb, I was mixing it into oatmeal or whatever. Uh, but psyllium is pretty much pure fiber, soluble and insoluble. Um, it also serves as a prebiotic, I believe. So ask your doctor about it. I think it's underrated in the metal, medical perfection, profession. I think that psyllium is a pretty awesome thing. But you do have to make sure that you hydrate, though. Like, seriously drink a lot of water. All right, so I'm just going to take some white, come in. I need to, that's right, my, my liner. I got distracted by all you people. You lovely people. I always get distracted by you. You guys know that I'm like minus three to my distraction score. <clears throat> there you go, friendly pyro. 
Yeah, Dee Clearman has it. Depends on how big the box is. Yeah, Sadie likes sparklies, so you guys are going to see a lot of new metallics under Sadie's. I suspect because, you know, I was not as into the sparklies, so I did I did, I did, did them, but I did not, like, go and make crazy amounts of them. That has left Sadie with an open playing field as far as sparkly colors she wishes to make, so I can't say that's a bad thing because she's into it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, squirrel. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't do the pills, Cookie Tigress. I just do, I have a big canister of psyllium husks, and I just use a tablespoon um, in my muffin mix because I do a muffin, a flaxseed muffin. Um, I make them every couple days. Make a batch, put a couple of tablespoons of that into the batch so that I'm, I'm, I'm having about the equivalent of maybe a little less than a tablespoon a day when I eat my muffins in the morning. And make sure you drink lots of fluids. But it's, it's one way to boost your fiber. If you can figure out a way to work it into food that you are eating, like I said, it can be difficult to do that because it does definitely absorb moisture and, you know, it took some playing around to figure out, like, how it was best in my diet. But if you can integrate it, it is a way to add fiber. Yeah, but I would, I'm not a fan of the pills either. I've had much more success just adding the husks to, like, oatmeal or... Because oatmeal, just put a little extra fluid in the oatmeal and then you're fine, you know. Or the cauliflower rice oatmeal, since that's what I was doing. But let's talk about tasty things. What have you guys eaten lately? La last night we were lazy. We ordered out for Indian instead of me making Indian. It was the first time we'd ordered out for Indian in ages. Because I spent like two weeks making Indian food. <laughs> Hitting F5 there. No medzi. Yeah, Benefiber. Yeah, I think that is. Isn't that based on psyllium twisted oma? Or is it flaxseed? Like a lot of those fiber supplements are working off of, um, you know, stuff like that. I also have, since I have a flaxseed muffin, obviously I'm packing a lot of fiber into the start of my day. Love Indian food, yes. Oh, you're making tacos tonight. Nice, Reverie. We made chili two nights ago, so we're having leftover chili tonight. And jalapeno cornbread. Oh, yeah, yeah, Chibi. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's why I kind of pack it into my morning. And then uh, I, I still can eat the leafy green veggies, so that's where I tend to go later in the day. I tend to go for more natural sources. Ah! All right, so just lining a couple of pieces. Uh, sometimes when you're lining, like, I always talk about how a model has different viewing angles. So on her, it's definitely her viewing angle is the front and the back. But that means that you might miss a little bit of lining, like, on the on the top or on the side, right? So you always want to double check yourself if you're trying to bring out those little details. Make sure that you've, uh, you've hit everything on the sides of the model if you're mostly looking at the front and the back, just to make sure. Oh my gosh, Singapore to Germany. Seared chicken and roasted sweet potato. Tasty. Very nice, friendly pyro. Yum, yum. I love paprika. Chicken parmesan meatballs for Friday D&D. &D. Hey there, I went splat. How's it going? Alrighty, let's see here. I want to get some of my shadow color by her hair so that I can differentiate this bracelet from it. This is where we get into the little fine work, the, 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 the little tiny, you know, adjustments and uh, highlights because we're working on these tiny bracelets. Yeah, I read something the other day that actually said that there's, like, laws against saying that food can heal anything. Like, the FDA has has the right to say, like, that drugs can heal things, but you're not allowed to say that food can heal anything, which seems kind of dumb because so much could be all helped by diet, right? So, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe, maybe it's not. I don't believe everything I read, so... I'm not certain if that's correct, although it would not surprise me because the way that terminology is controlled and uh, 
stuff like you know like what can you what what mean what does all natural mean right what is what is uh gluten free mean versus gluten removed or you know we do seem to have a kind of a hankering for precise terminology so i'm doing some little highlights there on the side of that bracelet good brushes rascal so so okay rascal three three four tips four tips four tips for a beginning painter one get a handle get a, a block or a thing there are all sorts of like fancy handles that you can get like this wooden one here hold on boom there we go you know like you can get all sorts of miniature holders essentially and just type miniatures holders or miniature holders and you'll get everything but i usually use a pill bottle or a wood block with some sticky tack i.e poster poster putty on it um various types of poster putty some are stickier some are not uh but yeah so i use like i've even got a giant pill bottle from my old my dog's old prescription that i use sometimes if i have a really big mini um, so first, get a handle for your mini. That way you won't rub paint off when you're trying to paint it. You can hold on to the block instead of the mini. Uh, two, if you take good care of your brushes, do not ever leave them nose down in the paint water, ever, um, then you should get a very good brush. At least one. You could get cheap brushes for the rest, but you should get one good brush that's expensive with a really good tip. And then you should treasure that brush and use it for all your fine detail work because it's going to make it a lot easier. Tip number three, thin your paint none of this paint that I'm using is full strength. It's all about two or three to one paint to water. When you're putting a base coat on, you want to go a little thicker. So maybe four or five um, drops of paint to one drop of water or brush full of water. Uh, but you always want to add water. Like these paints are meant to be thinned. They are meant to work that way. So, uh, and then the final thing is uh, very little paint on your brush. So when you're working with thinner paint like this, it's really easy for it to get out of control because it's pretty runny. So when you dip your paint brush into the paint, only use a little bit. Even if I was using tiny brush and the tiniest brush I use, I'm using very big brush right now, but, but the tiny brush I use is like, like this. So even then, if I put the same amount of paint on a tiny brush, it would only be half of tiny brush. So you don't want to ever like dip your whole brush in. And if you are using a larger brush and you're having trouble controlling your paint, then switch to a smaller brush. It'll, it'll essentially allow you not to go overboard. So then if I'm using tiny brush, I'm putting about that much paint on, which is about a third to a half, but then I'm also wiping it off. I'm, I'm loading up with paint, but then I'm dabbing it off on the side of my palette until my brush can come to a natural, you can see how tight that point is. Then I can sit here and I can hit these tiny little details with tiny brush and not have the paint go everywhere. I can be very precise. So to recap, always put your mini on a handle of some sort. Usually poster putty or double-sided tape is the way to adhere it. Either one works. Two, when you take decent care of your brushes, i.e. you don't leave them nose down in the paint water, get a really good brush. Good, really good brushes are Kalinsky Sable. That's the top two grades of red sable, grade one and grade two. Most of the Kalinskis won't tell you which they are, but you can usually tell from the price. A really good Kalinsky is going to run you between 15 and 20, and a secondary um, Kalinsky, like a grade two, is usually going to run you nine to 12. Um, so you get what you pay for with brushes. I mean, both of them are very good. They're both much better than a, just a synthetic crappy brush, but pretty much good brush. Once you get that good brush, you want to thin your paint a bit because if you're using a really small brush, especially if you choose to get a tiny brush instead of a bigger brush, um, then you want that paint to come off your brush very evenly and nicely. And if you're using something with a razor tip, it's going to do that better if it's thinned. Um, and a third, very little paint on your brush. Load it up so it's just like a third of the brush, maybe a half if you're using a tiny brush, and then dab it off on the side of your palette. Don't just stick your brush in the paint and wipe it once and go to the mini. Actually dab it off until you can see that nice natural point on your brush so that you know that the, the paint isn't going to just like boom off of there. Those are my best tips for beginning mini painters. If you only do those things, you will be out of the gate much better than everybody else around you. And the other thing to note is that the size of the brush is not important. I was doing those same tiny details with my giant brush and with my tiny brush. The only difference here, I mean, the only, the only thing you really need to worry about is the tip. The quality of the tip is why we go to these natural hair brushes. If you really are against a natural fur, then you can go to, um, there's some synthetic Kalinskis, 
Um, some brands are making synthetic sables that are decent. They're still not going to last like these, though. The reason you pay so much for these brushes is that if you take care of them, they will last you for years. Like, I've been abusing this one. Is this my Newark one or my older one? Let me see. There's one I have that I've been abusing forever. Yeah, this is the one I've been abusing forever. So this has been abused for over a year and still keeps a razor tip. Um, the brand new one is just a little thicker. So you can see the wear on the brush here. This one. Well, this is always fun. So the one on the left was is a fresh version of that brush. And the one on the right is the one that I've been beating up for over a year. So you can see how it's thinned down. It's definitely lost hairs. But even now, I can still paint anything with it. I can hit micro detail with this. So, and I, I don't know why my brushes wear this way. I never lose the tip. Um, I, I suspect it's because I am a compulsive rinser. I am always rinsing my brush. So over time, that's probably going to loosen the glue and the adhesive that holds these hairs in. And I'm going to slowly shed hairs. That's what I think. That's why I think I, I do it. Because I met somebody else whose brushes uh, thin this way as they age also. And they also are a compulsive rinser. So. so that's the only, that's our working hypothesis right now. Yeah, like you need you need a good brush, like either a good synthetic, which would be like the Reaper brushes, the the you know red handled ones. Um, a decent synthetic brush is going to run you usually around five bucks. Anything that's under five bucks is crap. I'll just say it. Um, you could get lucky if you got a natural sable brush for around five bucks. Sometimes they're built okay, but they won't hold a tip like this. And Rascal, I'll tell you. Um, the quality of your materials here in this hobby really matters. Um, I mean, it's the saying in the art community in general that, you know, you, you get what you pay for with supplies. And getting a really good brush that holds a tip like this while you're painting with it is going to level you up instantly. Because for the first time, you're going to be able to hit all these tiny details that you see on these figures. Otherwise, you have to, like, kind of go for generalistic ways to kind of kind of bring the details out. But you won't be able to necessarily hit everything. And... I believe that like the key to this hobby, the key to enjoying it is to remove as many frustration barriers as you can. So when you get frustrated over not being able to hit some of the fine details, that's when you should start shopping for a really good brush with a really good tip. And then you'll find it's a lot easier. You still have to build brush control, but I mean, you build that naturally while you work on miniatures. You'll just slowly get better at hitting the little details as long as you keep trying. Um, but getting a brush that enables you in that and doesn't get in your way is key. Yeah, I'm not sure. I Those are not the Kalinske brushes, I'm pretty sure, Rascal. But they will be better than the tester's brush. So mess around with the hobby. See if you, if you like it enough that you're going to stay in it. And if you find that you can develop good brush practices where you do not leave your brush in your paint water, um, then invest in maybe one of the Reaper Masters brushes, which is the Black Handle Kalinsky Sable. They're about 10 bucks, 10 or 11 bucks. The size I like is uh, the Ott 5, 0 slash 5, but the, this one is more like a 0 slash 10. Um, in the Reaper. Or you can go on art supply stores like dickblick.com, which uh, gets the best prices because they're a mass retailer. They also have a great guarantee in case your brush gets crushed in the mail. But yeah, we could talk about brushes forever. There's lots of different brands everybody likes. So really, Rascal, um, one of the things you could do is go to Reaper's Facebook page or the Reaper forums. Uh, or the Reaper Discord, all of which I think we can link in chat here, and ask about brushes. Like when you're ready to maybe upgrade to a bigger, a better brush so that you can hit things easier, then uh, ask people. Okay, what's your favorite brush? Why do you, what? Uh, yeah, what do you use and why? What brand? Where do you get it? How much is it going to be? Thank you, John, for the. I, that's why I was, I was summoning John there very subtly. Thank you for the Discord. So the Discord probably is the best place to go. Um, new people. If you want advice on materials, right? And people are going to give you all sorts of suggestions. And then it's up to you to figure out what works for you. A lot of this hobby is figuring out what works for you. Because when it comes down to it, the best advice in the world that I give you is not going to be good advice if, you, if it doesn't work for you. <laughs> and it's just, the, it's just the way it is. Uh... Yeah, I mean, Francis has <laughs> Francis has a point. Uh, 
that, you know, even if you don't get, like, to super level, you still can get to a level where you really enjoy your miniatures. And that's the level you should aim for. Um, and then if you want to go beyond it, awesome. I mean, I am of the opinion that anybody can get to a decent, like, competition level if they if they care, right? It's like everything else in life. It's like how much time and energy do you want to invest in doing it? If you really passionately get, like, super excited about the hobby, you can make very, very far strides, dramatic strides in a single year without even painting, like, all the time. But it's all how much attention you put into it, how much you learn, how well you integrate what you learn, how fast you learn. Happily, there are a lot of resources out there for people who are just starting out in the hobby now between YouTube and Patreons um, and uh, Twitch. There's all sorts of great, glorious people out there who are, good at, who are good at the hobby and who really want to inspire new people coming in, including me. Oh, good, Huntsman. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, any good brush, any good quality brush should do that. Like, uh, the problem is a lot of people start with really, really cheapo brushes because, I mean, and they think that they can manage with that for a while. But the truth is that, you know, your brush quality, when you're painting something this little, your brush quality is actually pretty important. If you start out painting bigger stuff like statues, you can get away actually with cheaper brushes because, you know, that it's a bigger thing. So you don't need to hit the fine details. But because of the detail work that's inherent in the miniatures painting biz, um, that's where you can get into frustration. And like I said, my, my big thing is I want to keep you guys away from being frustrated. Like frustration is the enemy of miniature painting, in my opinion. Frustration is the thing that makes you want to hurl your brush across the room and not look at the mini for a while. And I like to help you guys avoid that if I can at all do so. Because I've been there and I get it. And there are definitely things that help avoid that. So I'm going to bring up a, a higher highlight. I added a dot of pure white there so that I can uh, suggest shine. We're a few minutes away from taking our first stretch break. That's another thing we like to do. A lot of mini painters online are doing that now, I hear. Doing kind of a, a wellness break where you do a little stretching. You should never like sit hunched over in your chair like this for hours on end. If you do, you get back problems like I currently have. <laughs> so that's why we're stretching these days. We learned the hard way. Like you always do, right? Just going to add some more white to the top of these guys. Get a little bit more punch. She's looking really good on the front now. Up, oh, my brush split a little. That meant I didn't unload it nicely. There, that's looking good. Excellent, a little bit here. Gotta remember to pop my highlights to pure white. Always pop your highlights to pure white with non-metallic metals, otherwise it will not look right. It will look like something else. It will not look like metal. Morning, Val. Things are all right. All right. I'm still fighting with my back, but today was the second day of me getting up early to do uh, yoga and exercises, PT exercises, before before I even had breakfast. It's still not fair. Like, I used to read about people doing this and go, how could you work out before you have breakfast? But here I am doing it 20 minutes every morning. Day two, day two. I did it and I haven't whined a lot yet. <laughs> That's the measure of whether it's going to succeed, right? Is how much you start whining about it within the first couple days. I'm not whining. I'm actually pretty proud of myself for doing this. I don't think I'm going to extend it to like going out and taking a run or anything, you know, before I have breakfast. But, uh, but we're progressing, guys. We're making slow improvements in our in our fitness regimen. So a bit of light there on the top of those bracelets as well. You can see it got lighter. <laughs> well, then it was an actual cat cow. It's just helping you, Kuridiko. It's just, they're like, hey, you need some resistance training, mom. As long as the cat's not like 20 pounds, then you've got problems. 
Um, perfection, the best way to do perfection isn't doing it like a mini at a time, Francis, I think. I had more success getting toward perfection. Um, and you never get there, you just get toward it. But I had a lot more success and liked it a lot better when I just focused on one part on each mini. So, like, if you were doing this model, focus on the transparent cloth effect and just do the rest to whatever standard you're at. Just relax, enjoy it, and do it to whatever standard. Remember, if you're painting, you're improving. So you just got to, you know, push yourself on just one area of each mini. And that way you finish things faster. And that's more gratifying, right? And, and inevitably, you will start to see little bits of improvement. The thing about focusing on a whole mini, I think, is is that it's tiring, right? Like you say. Whereas if you just, because paying attention to something that intensely really does sap your energy. But if you just say, okay, we're going to do transparent cloth. I'm going to work really hard to get this looking good. I'm not going to matter the rest of the mini. I'm just going to paint it. Just going to paint it and enjoy it. You know, and then maybe on your next mini, you get a mini with a great face and you're like, oh, I'm going to do the face to the max. But the rest of it, the rest of it, I'm just going to paint it and paint it to whatever level you're at. Right. And if you're still at a level where, say, you're working on blending, um, then it's like, well, just work on blending one thing at a time. It's like, I'm going to blend this cloak today because it looks like it would be fun to blend and relatively easy and it'll make me work on that. So I'll make the cloak blend as best as I can and then I'll paint the rest of the mini. And if you keep doing that and you keep swapping it around to different areas and different sections, you do finish more, which makes you happy, makes you good, gives you that feeling of completion boost, right? But you're also still tuning your skills. You're every mini, you're trying to boost something different. Um, kind of like mini cross training. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, exactly, Safaroko. Safaroko also has a good point, and that's that's internalization, and it's and it's um and it's thinking. So there's a great book called um I think it's called Fast Thinking, Slow Thinking, and what it essentially talks about is is the learning process. And as we start a process, we're using slow thinking because we have to stop and think about every single thing we do, right? And so as we get better and better at that specific thing, we think about it faster and faster. Like we, we don't even have to stop. It's because we don't have to make a conscious call, right? I don't have to stop and consciously think about loading and unloading my brush. I just do it because I've done it so many times before and I know how I want it. So you're going to get faster as you go as well. And that is why. Essentially, as you internalize each part of the process, you'll get fast you'll get faster and then as you learn new techniques or as you try to push yourself you're going to slow down again because now you're learning something new and you're going to have to think slower in order to analyze that and really understand it yeah yeah i liked it when i heard about it um Safrogo. there are a couple of books out there that kind of reference it that talk about like internalizing things and and, you know, because you're, you're always in those stages of learning, right? Where you're, where you're unconscious, you know, incompetency, and then you're conscious that you're incompetent and you want to get better. And then you're like, uncon you're, you're like conscious uh, um, competency, and then you're unconscious competency. So you kind of like go on this, this uh, rail where like, I'm just painting. Oh, now I can see that I need to get better, but I have to work at it. Okay, now I'm better, but I'm still slow. Oh, okay. Now I've got it all down, all dialed in, and now I've gotten faster. So yeah, yeah. How many streams did this one take? Well, wow, three hours is a long time. If she had enough patience to paint. <laughs> well, yeah, I'd say just concentrate on little things. Like when I was painting for eBay, when I had to make a living at this back when I first tried freelancing, which was a lot harder without Patreon, I'll tell you that. Um, I, I did that. I had to paint the mini relatively fast and relatively well, at least cleanly. But then I would work on one thing and really work on it for each model. And if it was a model like a human, I would, I would usually like do the face because that's a really important part, right? Or the skin tones. Um, and if it was like the cape, I would do freehand or I would concentrate on my blending, stuff like that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's when you want to get good and fast. And I'll tell you, I'm still not super fast, Francis. If you, if you think that you can do one of these in two hours, then yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, but I've gotten it down to about six to eight for a simple figure, uh, to, with nice blending and good skin tones. And, you know, when I, when I don't have to stop, obviously when I'm doing stuff with you guys, and I just realized I have to highlight these little, oop, oh no, you know what that is? That's the stretch alert. So I will get out my phantom glow, but then I will stop and do stretches. Um, so let me grab that. 
Yeah, you never get instant with it. You're never, I mean, only the only person I've seen who can really nail a super fast model that's good is either going to be like like Lovejoy if he's doing a lot of it with airbrush and then he's hitting the details or like Derek Schubert who's very good at just hitting all the highlights and all the shadows very fast like his blocking in even even Derek's blocked in figures look like really really good um so yeah it is stretch time yeah well the thing is that I always believed is that it's not about patience it's about kind of getting in the zone yeah we're stretching don't worry, guys. I'm stretching. I know. Uh, so, like, I always found that when I got in the zone and was was really happy just that I was painting, that uh, that it, I didn't need patience, right? Because then time just kind of goes away and you just, like, focus. So if you, if you don't, if you let yourself be a little less conscious of time, like, when you're really, like, happy, like, get in your happy zone. Like, for me, it's putting on headphones, listening to music. And that makes me kind of like just go into the zone. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, Rascal. I think that's because um, because of the kind of meditative quality of it, right? Like you're focusing on something that's not your outward issues. You're just focusing on putting paint on the mini. And, and you have to kind of concentrate, right? Because that's a small thing. Or in scale hobbying, there's a lot of detail work that goes into that, right? Like, you totally, Rascal, if you stay in, you should come to ReaperCon and, like, bring... We have a, a in the painting competition, we have a class for uh, skill models and ordnance. Um, and we're always looking to build that category because, you know, a lot of people here started with, like, D&D figures, right? They didn't start with model tanks and planes and all that cool stuff. I always love seeing those skill models because I started with that, too, when I was a little kid. And the really good ones are mind-blowing. So I'm going to do some cat-cow stretches on the floor, guys. So y'all get out of your chairs if you've been sitting there for longer than half an hour and stretch, please. David, that goes for you too. standing up stretches. Doing some arm circles today because shoulders get tight. I think that's true of anybody who paints their hobbies, get really tight shoulders. There we go. And just... All right, that's good. Excellent, we're back. Yeah, no problem. Everybody needs a stretch reminder. I just have one set now on my phone automatically. I think the problem is just that sometimes if I tell it to go off, it doesn't stay on. Yeah, I have to reset it every day. Make sure that it's there. There we go. Reset for tomorrow. And then finally, remember to hydrate, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Neosho. Still hanging in there. 18 months. Good job. Yeah, art is great therapy. You could work back into it, Francis. Unless you've had like fusions or something. If you have, if you had spinal fusion surgery, I wonder if you. I wonder if people still can. I don't know. I should ask my friends who've had fusion therapy, but they're probably not doing backbends or even trying to. <laughs> so, I could never backbend. Like I was the least flexible girl in my class in, in when I was little. Like I was so self conscious about it. I was kind of mad later in life when I realized that flexibility. If you're not unnatural at it, flexibility is something you can still build. Um, I learned that in Tai Chi and I was so mad <laughs> because I was like all those years in gym class, they could have been teaching me how to build my flexibility instead of making fun of me for not having flexibility. 
you know, I was not Karen, the girl who could do like effortless splits and back bends and tie herself in knots, right? And and it was like, well, that's what you should be able to do. You're young, and it's like, well, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah, I mean, it's it's goals, right, Reverie? Like that's why I say it's like what works for you. Like it really depends. If you want to get good, you can. If you would rather get to a point where you are just happy with what you have painted and you complete a lot, you can. Go for it. Like, set your goals accordingly. Always set your goals in course. I mean, I love to teach people to do, like, you know, the, the fancy stuff that I do. But if that's not, if you don't want to go that far, don't. Then just use, like, the tips that I give you, like, about brushes. Because a good brush is always, always a pro. Always a plus. Whether you're doing simple miniatures or elaborate ones. Because you still want to be able to hit some of these details. Then just paint and have fun, rascal. Set your goal accordingly. Then your goal, your goal, rascal, will be to figure out, once you start painting, figure out what your frustration points are. What is frustrating you about the hobby? And ask for tips on those. So find the barriers and then find the way to get over them. And that way... You know, that way you're always going to have fun, right? Because you're focusing on that. You're focusing on removing the frustration barriers in the hobby for yourself. Huh. Yeah, I guess there's limits then, Image. I mean, it makes sense. Some people just have more flexible joints, but... Right. And a lot of people, Reverie, also do a combo. Like, you know, my boyfriend, David, he'll do like, he'll work on competition pieces and he's an amazing painter. But when he wants to relax sometimes, he's just going to whip out some board game minis or zombicide minis or something. And he's just going to speed paint those to a decent level and he's happy. Right. So a lot of us do both. Right. We, we do like just simple minis just for fun and enjoyment and maybe because we don't need them to be super. But then every once in a while, at least for me, I like to push myself. I like to see how high I can go. Um, so, oh yeah. Yes, PT is important. Have fun, friendly pyro. I know it can be brutal. <laughs> I've been there when I put my back out. So it was nice meeting you and I hope you make it back tomorrow. I also do a stream on my own show, uh, twitch.tv slash uh, painting big. Although I think we're D&D &D today, so not, not as much painting. Alrighty. So let's see what we got here. I'm pretty happy with the gold on this side. Uh, that's right, I was going to do my phantom glow. Because these armbands I didn't highlight. The phantom glow is a pretty teal color. It's these green, green accents that I chose. Yeah, yeah, that's my, my logo. Logo, logo, logo. That's me. That's my other alternate reality. Um, I have my own channel and my own, uh, my own um, Patreon. Patreon.com slash painting big. It is actually, I only work part-time for Reaper now. So my main, uh, my main support structure is you guys, the people on my Patreon and also on my personal Twitch, who are helping to support me every month. It's exciting and nerve-wracking sometimes, but I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. To be, an, to be a freelance artist again after so many years actually was one of my goals. One of my life goals. like Because I tried it years ago and I was terrible at it. And I've learned a lot more about freelancing successfully since then. So what I'm doing is putting just a little bit of highlight at the top and bottom of each of these bands just to catch the light a little. Very simple. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, Friendly Pyro. Awesome. Yes. Okay, now I know who you are. Fantastic. Yeah, we did that bounce raid thing where we're like, okay, here, and then boing. <laughs> it was funny. I love it when it's like, darn it. But I'm glad, well, I'm glad to meet you then. Hello. I should, um, is your Twitch name, is your Twitch thing Friendly Pyro? Is that who you are on your channel? Like, what's your channel? So I can friend you or follow you. And that way you'll be on my, uh, it'll tell me if you're up and I can always make sure to raid you if you're up. So feel free to tell me who you are on Twitch, twitch.tv slash who. Because I don't remember because I, I can't remember anything I've done since breakfast. <laughs> 
fantasy cartographer. Okay, and Friendly Pyro is your channel. So twitch.tv slash friendly underscore pyro. All right, I'll go look you up afterwards. And make sure to give you a follow. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, I do a, I do kind of a, I, I don't know. My channel, my Twitch channel is all about just, I guess, being me. <laughs> oh, I'll go look. I, I love maps. Two underscores. Okay, got it. Let me make a note. Eh, two underscores. I'll put a, put a, eh, eh. Should remember that. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I love maps, so I'll go totally give you a, give you a look. So we do, um, we do a couple things on my channel. We do, uh, today is the D&D stream, assuming my back holds up. And then, uh, Thursday, Thursday I've just started to do painting, um, whatever I feel like, really. I should show you, David got me presents yesterday. Or really, he got me presents, you know, weeks ago, but it took a long time to ship. So he got me some stuff from Black Crow, which does larger scale models than Reaper and in resin rather than plastic or oops, see I wiped out a little bit of my lining there I got my white up a little bit too high so I'm gonna go and adjust that I do not play video games on stream I don't even really know how to do it like uh if I played anything I'd probably play overwatch and show you guys how awful I am <laughs> I'm so bad but I love that game so much um but yeah I've always uh with streaming, what really appeals to me about it, Cookie, is the teaching aspect, the answering questions and teaching. Um, so, like, if I was playing a video game where I'm not very good at video games, so I don't feel like I can answer anybody's questions on them, mostly your questions would be, oh my gosh, why did you do that? You just died. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, but yeah, the, what draws me to Twitch, especially these days, because I have to kind of, with my back being the way it is, I've got to kind of limit my uh, amount of time that I spend in this chair of mine. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I really enjoy the, the reaching out to people and teaching them more about um, painting. And the D&D stream is just a fun thing because I don't have a group out here, obviously, because COVID, right? We all got kind of our, our real life groups, uh, unless they adapted to digital kind of got shafted plus I just moved out to the west coast so my group is like now back in Texas um and is a different group so so I uh I decided to run D&D &D and try to learn the 5 5e system with everybody on Twitch which has been fun actually it's been a lot of fun but then uh yeah some days on Thursdays I'm switching back to some painting painting with Anne just regular painting usually high-end painting like, I worked on my Sky Earth um, non-metallic metal this past Thursday. I mean, stop when you're happy. Um, willingness to call many done when the frustration sets in instead of having 20 work in progresses. Yeah, yeah. That's why I kind of have, like, kind of a, like, does it have a shadow? Does it have a highlight? Do, am, I, am I more or less happy with it? Okay, it can be done. Um, ask yourself... Uh, um, insufficiently mad ask yourself just if uh if you're if you're pretty happy with it right like is it is it all like like has it all been touched have you have you done your highlights and shadows on everything and then just say okay um the other thing to ask yourself is can I learn anything else from this that was a really good thing for me to ask myself when I was trying to judge like okay is this done is like well will I learn anything new or get any useful practice if I keep going and if the answer was no it'll just be me kind of rehashing stuff I already know um I set it aside it's done it's done like I could I could go higher I could go more with all of the miniatures that I paint on this show I could I could step it up but the question is will it be useful to do so and the answer is usually no it won't so that's that's kind of you know what I ask myself because I mean you're painting for the fun of it but if you're also trying to get better then your goal should also be to like you know to learn to integrate more of your knowledge with every model and there is only so much that any one miniature can teach you remember that that's a big big remember is only so much that any one model can teach you so you are better off being done with it putting it aside and moving on to the next model 
And re remember, just because you put it aside doesn't mean you can't go back and touch it up later if you, if you like, get interested in it again and you're like, you know what? Those orange pants, they really need work, you know, or something like that, right? So that's, that's all the... It's really, it's done when you say it is. All right, I think I've got that side good. I definitely need more highlights on this side. I need all my NMMs on this side. You can tell that I haven't touched the back in ages. So we're gonna block in the gold and then we're gonna, she really is almost done. Like this model is so close. There we go. So I'm using a succession of yellows that, that I mixed earlier to kind of bring up a gold color on the back of these bracelets. Bye, friendly pyro. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't buy into that. Like I used to like that whole, you know, art is never done, it's merely abandoned. I don't think so. I, th I think that for me, a much healthier mindset is is uh that no i'm done i've learned what i can from this model and i'm gonna move on otherwise for me i just feel like this big weight like having too many models like in in process just feels like a mental weight on me i have to like put them away and get them out of my sight if i'm gonna do that um otherwise i just it's it feels like mental clutter to me so lately i've been taking great pains to try to either to put things just away in boxes if i know that i'm not going to work on them anymore um, get them away from where I can see them if they're in progress or to just limit how many new projects I start. Yeah, she is a very I dream of genie, isn't she? Which actually brings up, Hey guys, we're going to be working on the genie instead of the rock troll when it's rock troll day because rock troll is done. Rock troll is finished. Rock troll will make a brief appearance on stream to show his doneness. But other than that, I think we'll work on the genie. There we go. I just want a little bit more lining. Wanted to hit my lining a little bit harder there. I'm using walnut today because I, I she's pretty cartoony. So, and her lining's pretty dark. So I'm using walnut to get that fine dark line because walnut is a paint that covers so well that you can really uh, thin it down and still get a very, very dark line from it. Unlike brown liner, which gets much more naturalistic when you do that. I mean, pretty much it's just dark and smooth and watery. And I maybe have to put another, I got a little bit of a wrinkle in the top of it. So I need to put a little bit more in it to make it level. But it's hard to see on camera just because, you know, you can see a little bit of the color in the bottom of the pool though. A little bit of color. And also the shininess of it is gonna be reflecting, a part of what you're seeing is it's reflecting troll. So it's actually reflecting troll. Um, which is cool. So I've got a little bit of excess gloss on stuff I need to clean up. But other than that, I mean, Troll is Troll. Troll. Troll, he's so much bigger than Dancing Girl. Look at him. Look at him towering over Dancing Girl. Eek! She says. But yeah, so Troll is pretty much, and I think, I don't think Ron's going to get Troll. I think I like Troll too much to, uh, to give him to Ron. <laughs> I think he's going to stay with me. <laughs> Even if David says he's too green to go in our case. Because <laughs> he seems, David seems to be like uh, making our, our shelves. Uh, oh, poor Ron, my butt. He still gets Juliana. He's going to get this one. And he'll probably get Shadow Eyes, the cat rogue. So I'd like to get three done before I mail them to him. I need to figure out how I'm going to base this girl though. And I, ha and I don't know if I'm going to base her on screen or not. Or maybe we'll do some green work if I feel like I can do something interesting um with her right now she's just got a pebbly sandy base which is not very exciting <laughs> all troll wanted was a dance right troll is cool i like troll and troll is my first like really like foray into really dramatic lighting that i that i finished so when i do my rule these days is uh when I do a piece and it's my first time that I've done like a particular technique, 
and I feel like I do it well, I keep that piece to remind me of, of the learning process that went into it. Um, so like keeping troll would be because of traumatic, dramatic lighting, keeping Mr. Grumpy, my bust that has the awesome breastplate. Um, I keep for the cloth effect and for the breastplate to remind myself of how I did it because I find it, I, I really, I encourage everybody to collect miniatures to like even buy miniatures from painters you admire, like commission them or, or just buy outright if something's for sale because seeing the piece in person makes it so much easier to deconstruct what the painter did. And sometimes if it's a brand new technique for me, I need to have that, that reminder right in front of me so I can see, oh yeah, that's how I did that. And I can see now how I did there. And I actually added a little bit, you know, of brown or red into that metal, you know, stuff like that. It's hard to see some of that stuff on camera. No camera is going to capture everything. Um, so when I do a piece that's a first for me, I keep it. Um, but otherwise, the pieces that aren't firsts for me, I am going to send a Reaper or I'm going to offer up for sale. Um, and I haven't really decided on some of my models, which, I, what I'm going to do, like which one I'm going to go to. Reaper will definitely get some free models from me. Like they'll, like I said, Ron will get this little girl when she's done. Um, once we've gotten her all set and, uh, he'll get, he gets Juliana and he'll get, um, like I said, he'll probably get Shadow Eyes, the cat folk. Cause I like Shadow Eyes, but Shadow Eyes is, uh, and Shadow Eyes has been fun for the fur and the patterning effect. But I feel okay with, with Shadow Eyes going to Ron and going in the Reaper Gallery. But Troll, I really like. And because he was my first, like, dramatic lighting effect, like, I'm um, my first real channeling that, um, I think I'm going to keep him. I haven't decided on Sphinx yet. Part of me wants to sell Sphinx. Like, you guys seem to really love her. And offering her up for sale would be uh, pretty cool. And she's a bones, so she'll ship really well. I'm going to try to get these little dots all around here with just my light yellow first to try to bring them out. Up, oh, made kind of a blork, but I mostly got it. That's all right. I can pick it up and, and separate those out with my uh, russet brown. We must be a little higher humidity today because my paint is staying at the good consistency for longer than it usually does. I definitely need more highlights on the pink back here and on the blue, so I need to come in with that after I get these metal, the metal settled, so to speak. So we'll maybe have another day, maybe two if I do that base. I kind of want to make a little colorful rug for her to stand on, like I just kind of sink her into another base and make her like on a stone floor with uh, with a colorful round rug that I can then paint um, that with a pattern. That would be cool. That would be fun. Maybe give her a little dish uh, with money in it <laughs> so people are throwing coins. Yeah, Sphinxy. Sphinxy is, is very cool and she's popular. I do need to here and there have extra infusions of money because the Patreon does pretty well, but it's... I still am... I'm kind of on the edge of where I want to be right now. So I probably do need to start selling more of my work. Like, right now I can exist, but buying things like shiny new miniatures is hard to justify. So I think I probably need to sell a few more things. And not much of my work is out there in the market. Like, there are very few things I've sold over the years once I stopped doing eBay. It is hard to get an Anne miniature. There we go. Now we've got that out there. And I'm pretty happy with it. Such a small thing. I just want to make it very simple. Simple. Uh, yeah, Rascal, pretty much my Patreon gets... Uh, the top two peers of my Patreon get first dibs. Um, so I've thought about putting things up on like my Facebook, but... Overall, I my patrons support me so so well. Um, like I really depend on Patreon for my income. So... I give my $10 and $15 backers uh, first dibs. If I don't get a bid, I've always gotten a bid so far, but if I don't get a bid, then I'll open it up to the whole Patreon. Um, but I, I start them kind of at a discount on my Patreon because obviously these people are already supporting me so, so much. 
and then uh, we do a, a public auction. So everybody can see the bid at any time. Anybody can bid at any time. And, and I give it a week, a week's time. That's how, I, that's how I've been doing it. But yeah, I thought, I've thought about going back and doing some eBay, but I've got, I, honestly, my time is at a premium the way it is between uh, commission work, finding time for commission work, and all the streaming I'm doing, because, you know, I stream every morning for reports, so the first thing I do. And then I stream two days later in the afternoon as well, and I'm doing PDFs for the Patreon and videos for the Patreon and having to edit those and paint, uh, sometimes paint examples and swatches for them and, and then add commissions on top of that. And it's surprising, really, like, how much time all this stuff takes up. Like, I would have thought, I would not have thought that I would have a full work week doing this but I do absolutely I do especially when you add in that you know that I I need to exercise every day and I need to you know I cook <laughs> dinner you know <laughs> this hobby is very addictive because there are so many awesome miniatures rascal so many and there are so many amazing companies doing them I mean Reaper obviously if you're in the USA Reaper is the easy like go to for really fantastic models there are also a lot of excellent european companies a lot of them very small sometimes just like one or two people just like a sculptor and like a 3d guy you know doing amazing busts and larger scale models over in europe um which are not cheap but but they're amazing i should show you guys where my yeah we got 10 minutes so here i'll show you guys the presents that david got me here here dancing girl sit stay so these are bigger models. They're 75 millimeter, but they're actually um, demi-humans, so they're smaller than that. 65 and 55, I think David measured them as. Um, so one of them is a dwarf barbarian, female. He knows I like uh, kick butt dwarven women. So this is from Black Crow Miniatures. And she's, like I said, she's a, she's a, a large model. So you can see uh, 75 is going to be about three times the height normally of, of this. But because she's a dwarf, she's only two times the height of a 28 millimeter. But she's got this cool axe. So she's got like this. And then she's got a shield. Hold on. Let me grab her shield. And it pegs in here. So she's got it kind of got it slung up behind her shoulder. So she can like, isn't this a nice sculpt? Oh my gosh. And the face is so good. And it's big enough for me to like do texture work on. So the thing is, Rascal, when you get bigger in scale... You've got a lot more room to do stuff, obviously. So like on this loincloth, I could do some freehand or I could do like embroidery or since it looks like it's leather, I could do leather texture where it's a lot harder to do that on very tiny models because you're really at that scale. There's only so much you can do, right? And then her shield looks like this, guys. It's really cool. She's fantastic. So I love her. So David bought me her and then he bought me the other one that they had who is a little halfling. I think she's a halfling. Pretty sure she's a halfling rogue. Ah. Ah, pulled down my lighting is, uh, unfortunately these were sitting by my light. So the rogue is really cool. I think she's a halfling because bare feet and her, her proportions. She's not as stocky as the other one. She's got her, her head kind of tilted down or her cape comes out behind her. She's uh, up on this little rock thing. She's got the two throwing daggers and then she's got more on her belt and uh, her cape's really dynamic. So really, really, really nice pieces from Black Crow. If you're a fan or you like demi-human kick-butt women, um, or any kick-butt women for that matter, I highly recommend those sculpts. They're both beautiful. Like, they took hardly any prep. Like, I found one mold line on the halfling. One. <laughs> it was beautiful. So they're really, really nice sculpts. But yeah, like, so essentially, Rascal, there's just, uh, there's just so much out there. A metal and plastic are, are equally easy to paint. Um... And it depends on the kind of plastic. So the Reaper plastic, the Bones plastic, you don't have to prime. And usually I recommend that you don't. I just wash mine. I wash mine in soap, hot soapy water and rinse them well, let them dry overnight, and then I just paint right onto them. Um, but with things like styrene plastic, like Games Workshop does, and where some of, uh, like, like the base, Bones bases, um, a lot of, a lot of like styrene kits are going to be like your car kits, right? And stuff like that. Um, model cars, model planes, that stuff you have to prime and you paint then normally. Um, and metal, you always want to put a primer down first and then paint it. So 
but once you've got that primer down, once you base coat it, it's all the same. It's it paints the same. Resin, plastic, bones, or metal. It's all the same. So at that point, how hard it is to paint is just based on like the scale and the quality of the sculpt. Yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff on Black Crow, Kroniko. Yeah, a lot of I, I will admit I gotten I've gotten very spoiled with uh, resin lately. It seems like resin is getting just better and better, and that we're not really seeing a lot of mold lines these days on on really good resin. So, I will admit that I've really liked painting <coughs> resin painting resin for a long time. So, I, I am kind of biased toward it. Um, I just love the level of detail. Although you get the sa same or similar with metal, but you can't get as big with metal right without shrinking up the price and making your molding process really difficult forgot the little gold bead in the center of her forehead i still haven't done her eyes so i'm going to try to get the rest of this gold done and then next time i think we're going to finish out the cloth um do her eyes and then kind of assess whether she needs finishing touches so what I'm doing now, <laughs> David's not dying. He's just coughing. I think he's just like the air, like stuff gets in the air and it just triggers him every once in a while. There is a lot of stuff in the air out here. Like I've, I've had more kind of reactions on windy days than I've ever had in any other state. But in general, my allergies aren't triggered by California. So it must be something very specific in the air out here that gets me. That just kicks up on windy days. No problem, planer. Thank you for the link to my Patreon. Anybody who's interested, I do have some uh, some little free stuff up there too. So if you go go to my Patreon, then you can grab some free stuff. Um, along with that free stuff is in fact a PDF to go with the free class I did for ReaperCon. So if you're just getting into Master Series paints, like some of you new people, um, go over to Reaper's YouTube and search for thinning MSP paints. That is a class I did for ReaperCon this year, last year, sorry. Um, and uh, it's up there forever. And I did a PDF that summarizes the information that you can download free from my Patreon. So once you watch it, I do recommend that you both watch it and read the PDF so that you know, you'll internalize the information a lot faster that way, if you do both. And then try to maybe uh, whip out some paint and uh, duplicate some of the things I do and it depends on how you learn right some people are going to learn by doing easier some people learn by reading or watching easier um, I personally am somebody who likes my reading comprehension is very high so I always prefer to read and then watch and then try to do but you may have a different process but yeah thinning MSP paints if you if you google reaper miniatures youtube you will uh, get to the youtube and then just search for Search for that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, Rascal. Ask all the questions. I always tell people um, when you come here and you're new, like, never be afraid to ask a question, no matter how simple or, or probable that we have gone over it in the past. Answering your question is probably answering the, you know, the questions of five other people who are watching this right now who didn't either either didn't you know think they should ask or maybe they're watching it afterwards right on youtube so i never never ever will stop you from asking questions always ask you're always helping not just you but someone else we always have new people on the stream and i love the opportunity to give information that's going to help you guys love this hobby because new people are the future of our hobby and hey, when you get into it, your family might get into it. Then <laughs> you're really the future of the hobby. It happens all too all too often. I know a lot of families who paint together. Let's see here. I want to start with my mid-tone yellow more than that brighter yellow, I think. So there's a big open area, and then there's that circle of little dots. I'll leave a little bit of dark around that. Haha, <laughs> the birds are happy. Yay. I've been seeing a lot. Yes. 
I've been seeing a lot of beautiful birds around here too. They make me happy. The hummingbirds should be back soon once the flowers come back. The hummingbirds probably went south when uh, we got chilly and the, the flowers weren't blooming as much. It's hard for them to find food. All right, so now I'm hitting these little bitty, and because I'm using a smaller brush, I'm having to reload my brush more often to hit these little details. But I'm gonna do these pretty light, and then if I want to, if I feel like I need to, I can come back and put on a wash or a glaze to darken them down. All those little nubbins around the uh, hair scarf holder, pin, whatever this is. There, that's better. And then we've got a little bit of an outer radius, a lot of which is showing up down here. Yes, you've corrupted four friends with this hobby, right? This hobby is really good for corrupting friends with. I mean, it, in a lot of ways, I feel like it's an accessible way to get into art because, you know, just setting out to draw a picture is really intimidating and difficult. But when you've got a figure in front of you, you, you end up learning a lot of things about like color and composition and mixing and highlighting and, you know, the way light falls and all this kind of thing. You, you learn all this art knowledge, but you learn it in a very accessible way because you've got the figure in front of you guiding you. So it's kind of a collaboration between you and the sculptor of the figure. But I mean, I learned more about working with acrylic paint, painting miniatures than I ever, ever did in art school. Part of that, you know, speaks to how bad my art school experience was, but part of it is just that this is a really good hobby for teaching this stuff. So if you've always wished you were artistic, but you felt like it was way, it just wasn't you. Like you just weren't like miniature painting is a way for you to get into that and to find out that you can do it. You absolutely can do it. All right. Got to get that top rim there. Yeah. You are a map maker though, Pendrake. Yep, taco time. I know it's time. I started a little late because of the internet issues, so uh, I'm going to go just a few more minutes before I call for rating, but... Yeah, see here you've got a little bit of thing where the, where the cast didn't really take up here, where there should be this upper rim, but it kind of blends into the headband. So I'm going to put... I'm going to do a little bit of paint plastic surgery, grab my liner, and suggest an edge where there isn't one. So for those of you who also follow my Painting Big channel, I am planning to stream today. Again, depends on my back for how long we will stream. But we have a Velociraptor battle going on, so we need to, like, you know, conclude that. You later. <laughs> taco time talk to you later is how i interpreted that particular spew of random letters although it does look like double taco time i'll give that to you taco to you later <laughs> All right, bright highlight up there. That's a little bit too much, so I'm gonna need to trim it back. I'm gonna use a middle brown to trim it back. When something uh, hasn't taken real well on a sculpt, sometimes you have to mess around with it to make it look right. That's better. <laughs> taco, taco time, yes, let's. That's good image.
Yeah, Reaper community is really, really good, Rascal. I hope you'll find that we are extremely helpful, extremely friendly. The worst thing that can be said of this community is when you want them to go kind of hardcore with critique. They don't like to do it. Uh, I'm fine with that being our biggest flaw. <laughs> uh. But everybody's very encouraging and helpful. And if you have a question, they will they will answer it for you. And you'll usually get several opinions, which is always better. Then you can try a bunch of different things. There, that's a little bit better. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We've got our gold. Lovely. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna trim up a little bit on this front one. The indestructible, they're not indestructible. Sorry, just nailed one with her broadsword. On its snout even. Because she rolled really well. They are not indestructible raptors. They are, however, velociraptors, so they are not to be trifled with. Yeah, she did more than half its hit points. Which is good, because the rest of you were whiffing. <sighs> Alrighty, I think we're good, guys. I think we're good. If you have any more questions before we sign off, now is the time to do it. Um, so if you've got anything else, any quick info you want, ask in the chat while Justin or John looks for a raid for us. Um, and uh, we shall persevere. Next time we see Dancing Girl, I will finish her cloth on the back. And then we're just going to do, uh, what we'll have then is what I call a soft finish. Which means that it's more or less done, but I could still probably pop and tighten little areas of it. So we'll have that soft finish, we'll stop and assess it, and then we'll add our little pops of highlights or shadow or whatever we feel would be useful. And at that point, then after that, it's, it's basing for her. Um, I do need to do her eyes too, so we'll do her eyes next time. <laughs> yeah, painting people, I mean, like gaming nerds in general are awesome, right? So yeah, no problem. Hope, hope to see you again, Rascal. We do this every weekday morning at 11.30 a.m. Central, USA to Central time. All right. This one, Reaper Miniatures. Reaper Miniatures and Mesra Dancing Girl. That one, Bobby Jackson. All right, guys, have fun, and I will talk to you later. Bye.